Hi, this video is about the textures that we find in metamorphic rocks. Now when we talk about metamorphic texture, we talk about the way that the crystals um, within that rock relate to each other. There are certain key features that we look for that uh, are indicative, first of all, of metamorphism, and also give some clues about the nature of that metamorphism uh, and therefore how the rock formed. We're very familiar with this graph, showing us the pressure and temperature conditions at which different rocks, and in particular metamorphic rocks, will form at. These different pressure and temperature conditions will create different textures within the rocks. In addition to this as well, there's a new texture that we need to be uh, familiar with for A-level geology. Okay, let's have a look at some of these textures. The first texture I'd like to talk about is a granoblastic texture. This is a texture where all the crystals within the rock are a similar size, um, for example, in this rock. There's no orientation or alignment of these crystals. It's a good indicator that the main agent of metamorphism here has been heat. Because of that, these crystals have sort of fused with each other and they create a distinctive set of 120 degree angles. Now these can be a bit subtle, so we do need to look carefully for them. If we go a little bit closer, we can see the effect of these. This, of course, is the effect of contact metamorphism. If we go a little closer, we can see that these crystals, which in this case, the pastel sort of colours indicate uh, are made of calcite, are fused together with some very distinctive 120 degree, degree angles. We've got almost hexagon shaped crystals uh, within this rock. The diagram uh, shows um, a simpler version of what we can see on the photomicrograph. Now, where we see a granoblastic texture that's made of calcite, we know the rock must be a marble. It's not just marble, though, that will show this texture. In this rock, again, we can see 120 degree angles. These larger um, crystals here, though, also show us some of these fused surfaces. You can see some uh, places here where the, you can see where the um, crystals have sort of merged or started to merge with each other. In this case, so the more monochromatic uh, view of these um, minerals within this rock tells we've got quartz. So this rock is a metaquartzite. The other big difference, I suppose, in metamorphic textures is where we get what we call foliation. Here the, um, the rock is recrystallized, like we see in a granoblastic texture, but we can see a distinctive alignment of the minerals. This is the foliation. The heat causes the recrystallization, and pressure causes the growth of these minerals in a preferred alignment, usually at right angles to the uh, direction of pressure. This rock, where we can see uh, quartz as the sort of the um, monochromatic minerals and the more uh, brighter coloured sort of um, elongated minerals are uh, actually chlorite, is formed by regional metamorphism because of that uh, combination of heat and crucially pressure. This rock is actually a chlorite schist, so a relatively low grade um, uh, schist.
it's not just uh, chlorite on the other mica minerals that um, will create foliation. In this rock, we can see bands of different colored minerals, different types of minerals grouping together, but with a still a clear alignment within this rock. Now, where we get this banding of different minerals, that creates a rock we call a gneiss. And it's formed at much higher temperatures and pressures than a schist. Sometimes heat will create new minerals within the rock. As we get the solid straight recrystallization going on during metamorphism, new minerals will start to grow. This creates a texture we call porphyroblastic. I suppose the metamorphic equivalent of a porphyritic texture. In this case, we've got uh, a Hornfels, but this large distinctive square crystal uh, is Andalusite making this rock an Andalusite Hornfels. So formed by contact metamorphism, you can see there isn't a, a foliation within this rock, but we do see the growth of this new mineral because of the heat that has been applied to this rock. We can see this in a foliated rock as well. This is a schist, but you see within the schist, there are um, new minerals that have grown. And in particular, the very distinctive dark mineral there, um, which as we know from other videos, is garnet. So that garnet crystal has grown within that schist. We can tell then that this schist has been heated to higher temperatures perhaps than the one we saw a little earlier in this video. Now, a new texture for us is what we call a myelinite. Now, a myelinite is a very different type of metamorphic rock. It's relatively unusual. We find it along major fault planes, and it's where we get extreme shear deformation, where the sliding of rock uh, along a fault plane shatters the, uh, the grains within the rock. And what we see is a very distinctive uh, lens shape um, structures within the rock. We zoom in a little bit. The ones labeled Q there on this rock, or on that photograph, are the distinctive features of this myelinitic texture. This is created by a type of metamorphism we haven't really discussed before called dynamic metamorphism where we get extre extreme shear stress caused by faulting. This rock is called a myelinite. So we can see that the range of pressure and temperature conditions that metamorphic rocks uh, format not only create distinctive minerals but also a set of very distinctive textures that tell us how that rock formed. It's a crucial piece of evidence if we're going to unpick the metamorphic history uh, and therefore the metamorphic pathway that a rock has undergone. See if you can come up with an interesting question and bring it into class. I'll see you then.